Hey City Life Church, welcome to our online service. We are so glad that you have joined us today. Hey, we want to remind you that today we are going to be doing communion. So while we are worshiping, be sure to get your communion elements ready so that you can partake with us. But let's pray right now before we start the service. Lord, we want to thank you for a powerful, powerful time in your presence today. Lord, we want to thank you that our faith increases. Lord, that every need you will supply for. We want to call down your provision from heaven. Lord, open the vaults, open the gates, open the windows and flood our lives today in this service in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Let's worship together, church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord.
is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. He goes before me. Defender behind me. Defender behind me. I won't fear. Filled with anointing. Filled with anointing. My cups overflow. Cups overflow. No weapon can harm me. No weapon can harm me. So I won't fear.
more, so that brother. He is my comfort. He is my comfort. But he always holds me.
We give you the glory. Give you the honor and the adoration to it. When I walked through church wherever you are right now just give the Lord praise bring your offering bring your sacrifice of praise to the Lord right now we are on holy ground church wherever the presence of the Lord is there is breakthrough battles are won giants are slain walls are brought down chains are broken sickness and disease is eradicated wherever the presence of the Lord is there is breakthrough there is healing, there is peace, and I want to tell you right now that you have a part of it. You are not excluded. The Lord is not forgotten. We just sung a song about Him knowing your name. Allow yourself to experience all that God is right now. Just begin to wait on Him take a few moments and just thank the Lord for what He's done. Offer up your praise to Him. Let it be a sacrifice. 
Begin to cry out to Him. Begin to rejoice. Let His presence fill the space that you occupy right now. Let His peace and His comfort enter the room that you're in. Come before the Lord and begin to ask this morning. The Bible says in Hebrews that we have become partakers of Christ. This means that everything that Jesus Christ is, everything that He has, we have access to. Him imparting to us doesn't take away from what He can do for others, but instead it adds a richness and a fullness to our lives. Today I want to say to you, take your healing, take your breakthrough, take your prosperity, take your abundance, take your blessing, take your purpose and your calling. Take the fulfillment of what God has for you. Don't be ashamed about it. I want to encourage you right now. I believe that there's a prayer that the Lord wants you to pray and it has wind on it. I want you to know, church, that prayers that move you, move Him. So today, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, think about a prayer that moves you. Be vulnerable with Jesus right now because He is the author and He is the finisher. And He can do everything for us. There is no need that we have that Jesus cannot meet. So come to the Father this morning. Bring your burdens before His throne and ask boldly of your heavenly Father today. Church, as we transition into communion right now, I wanna remind you that what Jesus did was final. You don't have to suffer with what you're going through right now. Your sickness is not your portion. Your debt is not your portion. the, the, The trouble that your children are facing is not your portion. Whatever you are going through right now that contradicts the Word of God is not for you. And today we break that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever your situation is, whatever hurdle you face, whatever the enemy is throwing at you right now, whatever doubt or condemnation or guilt is coming over you, I say in the name of Jesus, it stops today. It will come this far and no further because Jesus is Lord. We are not a slave to debt. We are not called to serve two masters, not sickness and Jesus. No, 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 just Jesus, not debt and Jesus. Oh no. It's just Jesus. On the cross, He paid it all. When He was beaten and when He was bruised, it was so that we could be made whole today. You don't have to suffer with what you have right now. So I wanna wanna take this moment. Would you take your cracker or your bread or whatever you have as, uh, as your communion today? We're gonna lift that up and we're gonna pray. And we're going to thank the Lord that indeed what Jesus did on the cross over 2,000 years ago is finished, it's complete, and it's still in work today. It's still working, it's still happening today. So let's pray together. Father, I, I thank you right now that as all of us lift up the bread, Lord, we remember that Jesus was beaten for us. Lord, His bones were broken, His skin was torn. Lord, He was whipped. Lord, He was abused. Lord, He had sickness and disease put on Him so that we don't have to. We thank You, Father, and we declare right now boldly because of the finished work of Jesus Christ that we are healed, that we are whole, that we are not a slave to sickness or disease. Whatever we are suffering with right now, Lord, we pray over the situation from a place of confidence in what you have already done. And we declare that we will not go back into sickness, but once it is broken, it is broken for good. I thank you, Father, that HIV is broken right now. I thank you that blood disease is broken right now. I believe there's someone watching who has brain trauma and and you've had a concussion in a car accident or, or, or a sports injury and you've lived with it. I see for 12 years you have lived with this. You have had the symptoms of a concussion for 12 
years. I want to say to you today, my friend, come and ask the Lord for freedom. He is healing you right now. You will, you will have a night like no other nights tonight. You will sleep through the night. You will not wake up. You will not wake up multiple times. You will be, you will be able to remember things that you haven't been re- able to remember for years. You will have memories come to mind and it will be as if you are experiencing them for the first time. Wherever you are right now and whoever is, is suffering from a similar thing, I want to declare over you that Jesus is the Lord of your temple. Nothing can stand in there that is imperfect. So to the head trauma, to the concussion symptoms, we say in the name of Jesus right now, they go, they are broken, they will not come back, they do not remain, but we banish them and we cast them out and we say thank you Jesus that healing for a lifetime will endure on this person. You will not experience dementia or memory loss. But you will go to Jesus and transition from this life with all of your memories. You will be a healthy, mental person for the rest of your life in the name of Jesus. And whatever disease or sickness or illness you are battling right now, we break it in the name of Jesus. Because when Jesus said, it is finished, He meant it. Let's eat of the bread together. Lift up the cup. Whatever you have, if it's grape juice or whatever you have around your house, would you just lift that up with me as we pray together over it? Jesus, we thank you that when your blood was spilled, history was written. Something new began. For the first time in human history, no other blood would have to be spilled for transgressions again. Because you are the perfect lamb who was slain for all of humanity. We thank you, Jesus, that when you were on the cross, you were thinking about us. You were thinking about these moments that we are experiencing right now. This moment is the joy that was set before you. You endured the cross for this. We thank you that all guilt and condemnation, Lord, just leaves people right now. You have taken our sins away. You have cast them as far as the east is from the west. You remember them no more. So why should we? I thank you, Father, that you have forgiven us, Lord, of the worst that we can do. Lord, we come to you in humility as your people. And we say thank you for your sovereign blood spilled for us. We declare over our lives, Lord, your peace and your comfort. We thank you, Lord, and we declare that your favor is a shield. We thank you, Father, that we can go boldly and in confidence into the next phase of our lives, knowing that we are cleansed, knowing that we are a chosen people, knowing that we are qualified, knowing, Lord, that you have great things for us. I feel that there's a person who's been battling with guilt, battling with guilt for a long, long, long time. And you need to forgive yourself. You know, John 3.16 says that, for God so loved the world, I'm gonna change that, so for God so loved you that He gave His one and only Son because you're worth it. If God has forgiven His imperfect creation, what right do you have to not forgive yourself? Your Creator has said, it's okay. We all blow it. No one's perfect. But still He chooses to love you and to care for you and to bless you and to declare things over you. So this morning, I wanna say to you, whoever you are, it's over, it's done. 
forgive yourself because Jesus paid too high a price for you to continue to live in guilt. Let's drink of the blood together, of the cup together. Thank you, Lord. And church, as we go into this next time of worship, I want us to focus our attention on the majesty of Jesus, that He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And whatever you need, He can supply for. Feel His peace and His comfort. Let His favor rest upon you as we worship together. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Would you just give him praise wherever you are? Isn't Jesus just so good in this place right now? Hallelujah. Such an honor and a privilege to be in his presence. It's actually one of my favorite things to do is to just come before the Lord, put on some great music and just, and just be in his presence and experience his glory. Well, church, we have a couple pretty cool announcements that I'm super excited to share with you today. The major one, and I think the only one, being that of March 14th, we are doing in-person live services again. We have capacity of 100 people with overflow, and we are so excited to see you again. We want you to come. We want you to fill this house up to 100 people so that we can worship together as we used to experience the presence of the Lord as a congregation and partake of the word like the good old days. Am I right, somebody? Come on now. And uh, we're so excited for that. Things are slowly beginning to open up. We're still going to be social distancing and we are going to be wearing masks. But parents, we have a parent lounge for you that's incredible that we encourage you to make use of as well as overflow in case we have uh, more people. Uh, and, and we're just so grateful that things are actually beginning to move and we as a people of God can come together once more as the saints in the house and do what we were made to do. It's incredibly exciting. But church, just as we transition into offering right now, as I've been praying over the last couple of weeks, I've really felt so strongly from the Lord that in this season, more than in others, the church is called to be a river and not a reservoir. The church is called to be a river and not a reservoir. We are called to allow things to come to us and flow through us. My dad has an incredible saying, he said it forever, and it's that even the hose pipe gets wet. This basically means that when you are watering others with your resources, with your virtue, with your words of wisdom and your good counsel, even you yourself receive of that. Now more than ever, we are called to be a river, to, to, to take what God has given us and, and surrender it once more to the Lord and say, what do you want to do with what I have in this situation today? I promise you this, the ROI in the kingdom of heaven is unbelievable. I have experienced this myself and every believer is called to experience this. There is great return, there is great reward and the Lord honors those who in the day of trouble trusts Him. We as the people of God are called to set an example in times like this. And there is good news when it comes to giving and bad news when it comes to giving as this season pertains. The first good news, the window is closing. Things are opening up. Everybody's starting to do better. The bad news is you have limited time to give in your season of need, of lack, in the season where it's sacrifice and hurts the most, in the season where the soil is just right for God to do something incredible, when you take even the little that you have and say, God, do the impossible. I believe that every person was made to experience this. So let's just pray together over this offering and over your finances. Let's pray, pray together. Lord, I wanna thank you. Father, that you have given us the ability to make wealth. I want to thank you, Father, that you have purposed our finances. Lord, your word says, Lord, that there is no need that you cannot meet. Lord, that your hand is not short, that it cannot reach or supply. So we come before you this morning, and Lord, we say we put our faith in you. We choose you again and again and again and again. Our trust is directed to heaven. We know, Father, that in all seasons of life, it is you who sustains us. We don't look to the systems of this world. We don't look to family members or material things or opportunities or jobs or careers, but we say, Lord, use what I have. Send me out, send my money out, send my resources out. Use all that I am, use my money. Do the impossible with it. Lord, and for your glory, let there be increase and redirection as you prune for the sake of double. We thank you for this 
in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. Well, hallelujah, church. We have an incredible surprise for you today. Uh, an incredible friend of this house, of our family, is with us today. He's an incredible preacher, a true man of faith. He is a gladiator in the kingdom, a warrior, a general, a soldier, someone who is inspirational and who God has used very, very mightily. Would you please help me in welcoming from your house, <laughs> Pastor Nick Moulton this morning. Hallelujah. Come on up. Well, City Life, it's so good to be here today. Come on. Want to give a shout out to Pastor James and Ginny. What an absolute privilege to be here. I want to tell you, if you're part of City Life Church, you are part of one of the greatest churches in our city. This church is established. Wasn't just a good idea wasn't just some guy thought, you know what, let's just do this church. This is a church that has been founded by a word from heaven. This has been a church that I want to tell you where the presence of God is experienced. It's a place of encounter. And so wherever you're watching today, if you're watching in your lounge, if you're watching in your bedroom. I, I believe today that there are some people that are watching. You never thought you'd tune in. This is a coincidence. I want to tell you, this is not a coincidence that you're watching today. This is a divine appointment. God wants to meet with you today. And so wherever you are, I want us to be receptive. I want us to be open to the presence of God right now. Father, we welcome you. In every home, in every workplace, if you're watching in a mode of transport, whether you're listening in a car today, whether today you're lying in a hospital bed, I thank you that God the healer is with you in that hospital room right now. Lord, won't you make yourself overwhelmingly known that people can experience and encounter your presence right now. Mm, come on, Lord. He's moving in your room right now. He's moving in the lounge. This is a holy moment. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Come on. Well, I don't want to mess around today. I want to get into the Word of God. And there's a well-known passage of Scripture it's found in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. And it says, For the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. But today I want to take it, sometimes, you know, like this worship team is anointed. I want to tell you they don't need the sound system. They don't need the amplifiers. But there's something that happens when the gathering of the saints, that it's anointed, that it's amplified by heaven. And I like to read from the amplified version today. It says, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear. He's given us a spirit. He's given you His spirit. A spirit of power and of love and of sound judgment and personal discipline. Well, I don't know. I feel like I've been washed to and fro. I feel like I'm being pushed by every current, every wind of doctrine, what the media are saying right now. That's not what the Spirit of God has given you today. He's given you personal discipline, the ability that results in a calm. Church in 2021, can we have a calm? Can we encounter the peace of God which surpasses all understanding? There's a calm, a well-balanced mind and self-control. Well, I've been all over the place. Listen, an encounter with the Holy Spirit gives you not only calm, but He gives you self-control. That we can say no to those things and yes, to the presence of God right now. Church, we're living in an unprecedented time of fear. 
You just drive down the road, walk down the road, and there is news stands and um, news posters up. Fear this, be afraid of that. We're living in a time where people are hunkering down. They're living, as this passage says, timid, hiding away, and not just because they are high risk. I understand that. But they're high, hiding away because fear has gotten a hold of them. And I understand, church, today that we will all experience fear in our lives. But I want to tell you, fear will not be broken by a vaccine. Fear is broken by the power of the name of Jesus. There is one name that will break fear over our city. That's why churches have been struggling to meet because the enemy knows the power of a church that declare the name of Jesus. It's the name of Jesus that breaks all fear. I remember in 1999, I was quite young at the time, but I remember the chaos that ensued because of there was a bug and it wasn't a virus, it was a computer bug called the Y2K bug. And everyone said, you need to get a, you need to get a, you need to draw all your money because when we cross over into the year 2000, it's all going to be gone. Get a bank statement because all the computers and there was widespread fear. And church, over the last 21 years, there has been fear propagated on this planet. ISIS, Ebola, MERS, SARS, mad cow disease, bird flu, swine flu, the flu, global warming, come on. Church, if there's one thing that's gonna kill you faster than all of those things, it's when you are gripped with this thing called fear, worry, anxiety. We don't need another thing to fear, church. We need the presence of God. I'm trusting God that in this generation, we will see a revival that will usher in millions into the kingdom. Your family will come to know the name of Jesus. A real church, a real encounter. I wanna tell you my God is bigger than sickness and disease. My God is bigger than a financial fallout or recession. My God is bigger than a depression. My God is bigger than a storm. My God is bigger than a sin. Come on. My God is bigger than faulty faith. My God is bigger. Can we give the Lord a shout of praise? Can we put our physical hands together? If you're watching online, can we put our virtual hands together and give the Lord a praise? Come on. We can praise in a pandemic. And so today I want to bring a word. You see, there's one fear, one fear that is more powerful than any other fear. It's a crippling kind of fear. I want to speak to you, church, today about a fear of failure. My message today is called Faith in the Face of a Fear of Failure. That's a, that's a lot of F's in one sentence. Come on. Faith in the Face of Fear of Failure. Oh, church, can I be honest with you? We all, including myself, have a fear of failure. The fear of falling short the fear of not making the grade, the fear of not reaching our potential, the fear of not seeing what we've trusted God come to pass. We all will fear failure. You know, as I've done ministry over the years, I've met a lot of successful people. And I wanna tell you, there's often a perception that successful people don't have a fear of failure. I wanna tell you that's not true. 
Successful people have identified the fear, but they've chosen not to listen to it. What fear today are you listening to? What fear today are you allowing to intimidate you today? See, successful people, they know that what has been said of them The promises of God are true. The promises of God are yes and amen. And they will come to pass, even though in their mind, like you and I, at the back, there is a fear of failure. See, our lives are like a sound desk. It's like a sound desk. We choose what we amplify, and we choose the sounds that we pull down on the desk of our lives. The devil wants to lie to you, and especially during COVID as you're watching today, maybe that fear of failure has gripped you. It's time to turn down on the desk the lies of the enemy. So many people lying on their deathbeds. You know what they're not wishing for is for a Ferrari, I want to tell you. Those on their deathbeds who are honest are sharing about their lives, biggest regrets, unfulfilled dreams, un fulfilled projects on ventured paths. See, I want to live my life to the full. I want to live my life, the abundant life that Jesus promised me, that when I just come into heaven, my ta- I just made it. My tank is on empty, but I made it, and I lived for my purpose. I did what God called me to do in my generation. That's how I want to come in to heaven one day. You see, we all feel failure, but it's not failure that will cost you, it's fear. See, fear will cost you what failure cannot. Failure is a lesson learned. I learned my lesson, right? Fear is having never learned. Failure is knowledge gained. I know what didn't work, right? Fear is being like the class dropout you never even tried. Failure is now I know. Now I know, all right? Fear is I will never know. See, failure can be one of life's greatest teachers, but fear is life's greatest bully. He's going to hold you back, church. Come on. And so as we get into the Word of God, listen, we're, we're preaching today from the Word of God, not, not the You magazine, not some random tabloid, not social media, not Facebook. We're preaching the eternal. These things will pass away. Come on. These things will fall to the side, but His Word will remain true forever. Come on. And so in Matthew, oh, I love Matthew. How many of you love Matthew? Come on. First book of the New Testament, come on. Matthew chapter 25, we're gonna dive in there. And as we begin to read Matthew 25, it's the parable of the talents. And in this passage, Jesus actually addresses a fear of failure. And in this passage, we read about a master who's going away. And before he leaves on his journey, he comes to his servants They're three servants. The Bible tells us to the one servant, he gives them five talents. To another servant, he gives him two talents. And a third servant, he gives him one talent. And I read this and I read it like you read it, right? God, that doesn't seem fair. I want to be the guy who gets five, right? How can there be this kind of like, well, one gets five and one gets two and one gets one? Well, the Bible tells us in verse 15, he gave to each according to their ability. Stop worrying, church, about what the next person has or doesn't have. Stop worrying about what's going on in the lane next to you. If you're focusing on the lane next to you, you're going to trip up and bail out and get a knee, injury. It's time to focus on the fact that God has given you according to your ability. See, the Bible tells us in 2 Peter 1 verse 3 that God has given you everything. Everyone say everything according to what you need, right? God has given you everything for life and for godliness. That's what the Word of God says. See, a talent in the Bible, 
was a precious metal. It had a monetary value. It's not talking, it metaphorically is talking about our gifts and abilities, but in this context, it was talking about moolah. It was talking about cash. Come on. It had value. To the one talent, Bible scholars will agree that it was 20 years wages, but you need to understand that one talent is 35 kilograms of precious metal. Come on. This, don't feel sorry for the guy who got one talent. He got 20 years wages in one go. Come on. One talent, 20 years. The next man who got two, 40 years wages. The next man up, 100 years wages. The master before he went gave out 160 years of wages in a moment. Let me help you what the Bible's saying here. Not one person is ever shortchanged in the economy of God. God has given you everything that you need. And so the five, the guy who got five, he traded, and the Bible tells us he got five more. The guy who got two talents, he traded, got two more, and then there was the guy with the one talent. Maybe he felt a little bit hard done by, but he dug a hole and he buried it, right? And one day the master comes back. The Lord of the servants come back. This is a church, this is a picture church of the fact that Jesus will come back one day. Can we be the church that has a holy reverence for the fact that there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun? Living in a world where there's no hell, erasing hell, no, there is a heaven, there is a hell. Can we be the church that preaches what Jesus has asked us to preach? And so the Lord of the servant comes back. The Bible tells us that we will give We will stand and give an account, not according to sin, I want to tell you. Hallelujah, as we took communion today, Jesus paid for it all. We're not judged according to our sin, but God holds us account as to what we did with His investment in us, what we did with our gifts, what we did with God's dream. Not just my dream, to live on some Weird island by myself, no one around. I know that's the dream of so many people at the moment, right? That may be your dream. That is not God's dream. Maybe in heaven one day, but we've got a mandate here on earth. Come on. And so in verse 20, it says this, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here, I've made five talents more. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little I will set you over much. Enter the joy of your master. Come on. And he also said to the guy with two talents, came forward. He said, master, you delivered to me two talents. Here, I've made two talents more. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you up over much. Enter the joy of your master. He also, who had received the one talent, came forward. I doubt he ran, (laughs) saying, Master, I knew you were a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed, so I was afraid. He had a fear of failure. Come on. If you're afraid to use it, he was afraid he would lose it. He hid his talent in the ground. I want to be honest with you today. If we were honest with ourselves, there's probably a large percentage of people that's like this guy with the one, but the good news is that can change for you today. You don't have to continue with a fear of failure. We're going to unpack this more. What are you doing with your life? I was given words to speak, God. I was given purpose to pursue, talents to use, but I gave it all back to you. See, according to God, your one life is worth loving. Come on. It's an investment that matters. It's an investment worth living, church. Come on. This one life was not meant to be hoarded. This one life was meant to be shared. Not meant to be saved, but to be spent. Not preserved, but purposefully used for the cause of Christ and for the sake of others. 
I heard a, a story recently of a survey they did in the United States, and what they did was they had this room fabricated, and in this room, they had a high ceiling, and at the top of the room, they placed a large bushel or a large number of bunches of bananas, right? And they had four test monkeys that they introduced into this room. And as they introduced these monkeys, the, the, the bushel of bananas was placed in a position that with climbing and navigating, they could get to the top. And as they released these monkeys, the first monkey went in. He kind of walked around the room and he saw these bananas. He thought, I am, I am climbing up there. He began to climb up to the top. And as he got to the top, a jet of water sprayed him and he fell down to the bottom. Bewildered and bemused, he kind of like, what was that, right? And again, the second monkey started climbing up. As the monkey got towards the top, a jet of water was shot, and it knocked the monkey down. This happened for the third monkey. This happened for the fourth monkey until eventually they're just cruising down the bottom, not knowing there's like bananas up there. But, man, every time we try, we just get knocked down. And as they did this case study, so they took one of the monkeys that had been knocked down and they removed him from the room and introduced one that had never been in the room before, never knew anything. And as that monkey came in the room, it saw the bananas began to climb and no jet of water. The other three monkeys grabbed a hold of it and kept on shoving this monkey down, trying to warn it of the danger that was to follow. And so this monkey fought it and fought it and eventually he gave up. And so one by one, they replaced the remaining three of the original monkeys until there were four monkeys in that room. Not one of them had experienced the jet of water, but not one of them was willing to risk climbing up to the top. They didn't understand why. They didn't know the reason, but they just stayed at the bottom. What's the point of the story? What's the point of this research? You see, the moment you try to live a faith-filled life, the moment you try to live out God's dream, a new business opportunity, I want to tell you, church, there will be people in your life who will try to stop you. And I'm not saying these are bad people. These are not people that that don't have your best interests at heart. These are people that have tried and failed and they don't want you to experience the pain of failure that they have experienced. And so they project it on you. They put it on you in that moment, right? Not because they didn't want you to succeed, but they didn't want you to go through the agony of failure. Come on. Rather keep you safe than watch you fall. Church, I want to say to some people watching here today, don't let your fear of failure or someone else's fear of failure keep you small. God would say to you today that it's time to rise up. It's time to make a stand. It's time to walk in boldness. It's time to walk in faith. What has God said to you? What is the promise of God over your life? Or is it your plan? I believe today God is reminding some people it's God's plan. It's the fact that back then in that day, I remember God promised me something, but family tried to discourage me. My friends tried to discourage me, even though I never experienced failure with it. Would you, church, today rise up? Would you begin to remind yourself and rise up, you sleeping giant? Walk in the power. Walk in the authority of what God has placed on your life today. See, a fear of failure will keep you stuck, keep you still. Here's, here's the point today, church. I want you to get this. And it's gonna sound super discouraging when you hear it. But on this planet, if I had to make a point today out of this story, you will fail. There are times in your life where you'll trip up, where you'll mess up. The book of James chapter 3 verse 2 says, we all stumble in many ways. 
But you see, like that song says, I get knocked down. But I want to tell you, church, God is the one who lifts you up again, who promises life over you. He will come and pick you up that even when you stepped out of the boat and you were so focusing on the storm around you, you began to sink. The Bible says immediately Jesus pulled down his hand and pulled Peter to the surface. That's who God is. And so they went strolling back to the boat. (laughs) You may feel sometimes that sinking feeling of failure, but that's not your destiny in Christ. That's not what God has promised you. Heard a story of Thomas Edison. He's the guy who invented the light bulb. Thank you, Thomas, right? We We got light bulbs all over, right? And when you read up about Thomas Edison... The story goes that he tried over 1,000 times and failed. And one day his assistant came to him and said, Mr. Edison, I feel so bad for you. I feel so sorry for you. You've tried 1,000 times and failed. And Thomas Edison looked at him and he said, I have not failed. I have found a thousand things that do not work. A thousand lessons that will build me up to bring light, to see the filament light. Would you pick yourself up again? Would you say, you know what? It's not over. My God has made me a promise and it is not over now. I'm going to step up. I'm going to step in. Church, your number one priority is not to play it safe, but to please God. Am I trying to please people or am I trying to please my God? If I was still trying to please people, I wouldn't be a servant of God, the Word of God says. I don't want to live my life getting into heaven saying, God, you know, you were a tough man. It sounded really hard, but Here's my one and only life back. Got a bit dusty from the hole I dug. I want to walk into heaven. Listen, without faith, it's impossible to please God. Would you step up a little bit of faith? Would you step up out of the boat even though you may sink? Would you step up and say, you know what? Even though I might fail, who of you with your kids, right? When they try. When they're riding their bike and you've taken the the training wheels off (laughs) and you push them for the good while while you're holding it, they have a perception it's all about them. That is the Father of in heaven right now. You may take a step of faith. You may be wobbling. I want to tell you, He's holding your seat firm. He's holding it all together and you're going to soar. Even young people uh, stumble and fall, but those who wait upon the Lord will rise up on wings like evil. They will run and not grow weary. You may have failed, but God today would say you're not a failure. Failure is an event in your life. It's not who you are. Church, we're living in a time of cancel culture where people make a mistake, where people mess up, and suddenly we write them off our cancel culture. Who taught you that? That is demonic straight from the pit of hell. See, cancel culture says people don't change. The Word of God says people don't change change without Jesus. He's the hope of the world. He's a loving heavenly Father. He's willing to journey with you. He's willing to take a chance with you. He's willing to be by your side as you take a step in faith. But God, I'm not really feeling it. God says, give me what you got. Take an inch and I'll walk a mile. Draw near to God and He will take a leap towards you, church. See, sometimes the reason why we're so afraid to try is because we've got the latest headline in our heart and not the Word of God in our heart. Would you come back to the Word of God? God hasn't changed. 
His word is true. His promises are yes and amen. And if you have failed, I want to tell you, God will work it for your good. He's the God who works it for your good. He's the God who can turn it all around. Woo! And when He does, hallelujah, hallelujah God. I bow to the King. I bow to the King because He's the one who works it for my good. If you're watching here today, I want to pray for you. I believe the presence of God is there, right there where you're watching from. He's right there next to you. And He calls you by name. He's not looking at you saying, yo, you. He knows every hair on your head. Before you woke up this morning, you were on His mind. And He says, it's time to get up. It's not time to bunker down, to pull the duvet over your head again. It's time to get up. But the good news is I'm going to help you. I'm going to be with you. If you've had a fear of failure, in the name of Jesus, that ends today. It ends today. That doesn't mean we won't experience fear. We'll just choose not to allow it to impact us, to influence us. Father, right now, I speak to every person watching who's been intimidating with a fear of failure. This pandemic has shaken our world, but thank you, Jesus, it has not shaken you. You are solid ground. Yesterday, today, and forever, you are solid ground. As you watch today, if you've never invited Jesus into your life, maybe you did and you've gone and done your own thing, it's time to come back to solid ground. On Christ, the solid ground I stand. In a COVID world, I wanna tell you there is no security. All other ground is sinking sand. But on Christ, the solid rock, I stand. Would you come home? I don't know what you've been told, but there is a God who loves you. He loves you so much. He didn't just shout from heaven. He's not the God of words. He's the God of demonstration. He sent His Son, Jesus, who came and took your sin and my sin upon the cross. We couldn't do it. He nailed it to the cross and He rose again. And whoever believes in Him shall not perish, shall not die, shall not face an eternal judgment, but shall enter into the joy of the Lord, an eternal life. But I want to tell you, church, not just an eternal life today. There is an abundant life to gain right now. If that's you, I want to pray for you. Would you pray this prayer with me? I want you to repeat this as we pray, as we bow our heads. Say this, say, Lord Jesus, I come before you today and I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart. Forgive me of my past. Forgive me of my sin and make me new. Thank you that you have never canceled me. I choose you, Jesus, as my Lord and as my Savior. And I will follow you all the days of my life in Jesus' name. If you said that prayer, sir, ma'am, congratulations. The Bible says that you are born again. All of heaven is rejoicing over you today. Oh, it's a beautiful moment. We want to hear from you. Drop us a DM on social media. Write a comment on Facebook, on YouTube. We want to pray for you. We want to know about the decision you made today. And then church, for those of you who are watching and you've struggled with this, I believe it's cast off you. I believe God is setting you up for success. Every good intention that's trying to discourage you is 
broken right now with the revelation that the dream, that the vision, the new business, the new job, the new qualification was from heaven. And if God has given it to you, He will give you the provision to get there. Just put your trust in Him. Put your faith in Him. Can we give the Lord a shout of praise in this house today?